everyone. I'm Raylene with HOA Fight Club. I'm going to discuss today the next part of my HOA horror story. So we've been going through things for so many, um, for almost two years now. So it was over, um, this was probably about May of 2016. We had the recall of the board. Um, we had a lot of nonsense going on. And so the night of the recall, of the board when we lost, the board decided to fine us because the neighbor next door, now this neighbor is the same neighbor that I had removed from the board, um, made a complaint that at 4.30 in the morning on April 23rd or whatever date it was, um, that my husband was smoking outside at 4.30 in the morning with my daughter and a bunch of friends. Um, and we just so happened when we got the complaint, that was the date that our oldest daughter um, had her college graduation party and the college graduation and everything. So we were actually in Utah at the time of the violation. So when I got the notification from the property manager, I emailed him right away and said, hey, this wasn't us. It's not possible. Um, so will you let the board know? Well, he came back with, it was you and it was your husband and that's it. So I asked him for the evidence. Well, the evidence he had was a text message from the neighbor saying that we were waking him up at 4.30 in the morning. So he, the neighbor, actually texted the board at 4.30 in the morning that morning. Um, and it that was their only evidence was that he sent a text. Well, anyone can send a text early in the morning, you know, or whatever hours at night and making accusations. But I asked if the board, you know, came and researched who was in our backyard. And for this, my concern was that if somebody was partying in our backyard, why weren't the police called? Why weren't, you know, why wouldn't the board go and deal with it right away? If there's a neighbor, why wouldn't the neighbor call the police? Um, so all these things were in question. Well, they decided, I asked, you know, right away, I said, you know, I want a hearing with the board. Um, I want all evidence and I'm going to have my attorney there and I want it recorded. I almost wanted a court reporter to be there because I wanted to make sure that everything was recorded. Well, of course they denied all this. Now the attorney at the time was the one that did the recall. And she said, the only thing that I was entitled to was a hearing, um, but that I didn't have any due process rights. So of course I turned her over to the ethics board of Washington state for the state bar. Well, she quit right away. Then they hired a new attorney. Well, with this new attorney, I had sent an email right away because she of course addressed me right away um, saying that I needed to pay the $50 fine. Now I could have paid the $50 fine, but then you're admitting that you did something wrong and we did do something wrong. And then the next time it can be a hundred dollar fine in the next one. So I just decided that this is enough. You know, I'm not going to keep being bullied by this board. And um, I'm not going to be punished for holding a recall. That does my right as a homeowner to be able to um, question everything, be able to campaign, be able to, just as our government is today, we have the right to um, campaign against anybody that's running. If you're a citizen, you can say, you can go support whatever side you want. But in HOA, they make it so that you can't even campaign. So you don't even know who's running for the board. Most of the time, it's just the same old board members. So I decided that I was going to fight this. And I was only going to have a hearing um, if my attorney could attend the hearing. So it took six months before we could finally come upon an agreement um, of a hearing date. Well, in the meantime, I had turned the second attorney over for ethics violations because she wasn't protecting the association. She was protecting this rogue board that was making false accusations. I could prove with um, text messages and, you know, uh, King 5 News did a news report and they pinged our cell phones from every tower. So I was like, I have all the evidence that it wasn't us. Well, it doesn't matter if it was you, somebody was partying in your backyard. But the neighbor's complaint was that it was my husband and my daughter that were partying in the backyard and smoking and all that. So I just said no. And so we, you know, we fought this battle back and forth, um, attorneys and getting the right dates and the property managers. Then they tried to set the date when I was in Mexico and it was just nonsense. So when we finally get to the date of the hearing, 
um, the attorney of record could not attend. Now, you got to remember, she's under investigation for her ethics um, with the state bar. So she couldn't really practice law at that time. So she had one of the people that worked in her office come in her place. Well, this person didn't do any review of anything. So when he got there, it was crazy. The homeowner just insisted that it was Steve. No, it was Steve. It was Steve. Steve did it. My husband did it. You know, your husband was at their party and with your daughter and he would not change his story. We could prove that it wasn't us. So we knew it was a lie. And the attorney that came to support the HOA was almost embarrassed because he knew that they were wrong and that they were doing things they shouldn't be doing at this point. Um, and of course, the board a week later issued a statement that we were found not guilty. Um, so all this money, all these attorneys, all these things that they did to come after me for 55 $50 fine was crazy and insane and not reasonable. Um, I did fight for legislation that year. And when I testified to the legislators of what had happened with this $50 fine, at the end of the day, I was approached by the attorneys who wrote the um, RCW codes for Washington State, the 6432-6434. And he told me, you should have just paid the fine. Why should I just pay a fine? Would you pay a fine if you didn't do something? Would you, you know, want people to say they committed a crime if they really didn't do it? And, and it was just, you know, the attorneys make so much money. I mean, that attorney made, I think her bill for that year was like $28,000. And that was mostly because they were coming after me for the fines. And I just said no more. You know, I had 10 or more thousand dollars um, for attorneys. And so we had to say no more and we put our foot down and stopped it. And the board was, um, by then it was starting to fall apart because they, they had to, now, now the new property manager who was also at the hearing, didn't, this property manager came in when the, in May at the recall, they started two weeks later and then they quit before the end of November of that year. So they were, weren't even in for six months. And the reason they left was because they knew the board was doing things wrong and unethical and they didn't want to be caught up on it. They didn't report it. They didn't say it was wrong. The board was wrong. They just quit on the homeowners. Instead of protecting the association, they protected their own interest, which I guess if I was the property manager, I would protect my own interest. But I think there should be something that if a property manager and an attorney see unethical things going on in an association, they should have a place to report that because they should be our first line of defense, not our first line of a fast track to foreclosure. So that's what happened with the um, fine and after the fine was done, things just got worse. It just didn't get any better. The punishment, the um, issues just kept going. And we will go over that because that's when I started decide we, we thought everything was over. We thought, okay, let's stop everything. We asked the board to just go into neutral ground. Let's stop this fighting. Um, and we assumed that we could move on after this. But you know how that goes. So on the next one, we'll discuss what happened after the fine. All right, I'll see you on the next one.